Hello boys and girls, fellow cosmonauts. This is John. I've got a little video here. I thought and this is 777. It's the seventh chakra. And then the black is the yin brain, the feminine brain, which is on the uh, right side. And then we have the white for yang, the masculine brain. So we're going to go over um, some of the structures inside the head. The main one being the sphenoid. So, like the Grateful Dead, I'm going to steal this guy's face. So I'm going to take the face off. And here, inside of the skull, we have the sphenoid bone, and we're going to discuss that. And this right here, these are the ventricles. The ventricles, these are actually uh, fluid-filled. And um, to me, this is like the part of the brain that tunes into vibration. Actually, some say that if you turn the ventricles a specific way you can get the ohm symbol to show up. I've played with it and that's about as close as I can get getting the ohm. You kind of see the three and that back aspect and this this goes into the higher brain, the lower brain, and the cerebellum, this part here. And um, fluid holds vibration so ohm being a sound, different vibrations carry these frequencies throughout the brain. But what we're, what we're going to mostly focus on is the sphenoid bone. And the sphenoid bone is, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, it is the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant that holds all the power. Now you can see here, I've painted this sphenoid gold, as I believe it should be. And you can see in the top of the skull, I have Michelangelo's uh, painting, Man and God Touching Fingers. And we're going to go over that also. Um, but the sphenoid bone, looking at this, Actually, in anatomy, these are called the greater wings, and these are called the lesser wings. And I'm going to turn here to my computer, and I've pulled up this page already. Let me go to my page. Here, this is Kings 627, and it says, And he set the cherubim within the inner house, and they t stretched forth the wings of the cherubim so that the wing of the one touched the one wall and the wing of the other cherubim touched the other wall and their wing touched and their wings touched one another in the middle of the house so here going back to the skull and that was referring to the ark of the covenant we have the greater wings of the sphenoid touching the outer wall touching the outer wall of the temple the temple being the inside of your head and then the lesser wings actually touch in the middle of the room. You ever notice that temples, they were always built huge and they had this huge dome to them and this inside empty space. A lot of empty space more than um, anything inside. Well, to me, it all represents the skull, the brain. There's a couple of interesting things about the um, sphenoid bone. Number one is this little indention here. And this little indention here is called the cella tersica, and it's a Turkish saddle is what it means. And you can kind of see from this angle, it's just a little pocket. And this little pocket is actually where the pituitary sits. Now, an interesting thing about the pituitary and going into what is inside of the Ark of the Covenant, they say there are a couple of objects inside the Ark of the Covenant. Number one are the two stone tablets that the Ten Commandments are upon. And to me, the pituitary is the Ten Commandments. You have two lobes of the pituitary, and the commandments are the hormones. Um, uh, just above, up, up, up here, we have the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, whenever you mentally feel a particular way or emotionally, neurochemicals are produced that goes down the pituitary. Pituitary releases hormones, the commandments of the body, and it affects the other endocrine glands, and all the endocrines are attached to chakras. So there's the chakra hormonal neurochemical tie-in, and it's right there sitting inside of the sphenoid, inside of the Ark of the Covenant. Another thing that is inside, that they say inside of the um, Ark of the Covenant, is Aaron's rod. And Aaron's rod is the um, staff that was thrown down that turned into snakes. And the spinal cord comes right th through here and touching that sphenoid. So I think that's pretty interesting also. So without a shove of doubt, to me, this is the Ark of the Covenant. You can see the wing structure here. And um, I want to go a couple of other things. Okay, here's the page I want. So here, like you have that um, Michelangelo's creation of man, which I had in the upper part of the skull. Because to me, 
that the skull is the temple. And actually, if you touch your temples, you know, the part of your head, just behind your eye, in front of your ear, what we call the temple, look where that sits. That sphenoid, if you're touching that sphenoid, if you're touching your temples, and literally, you're touching the Ark of the Covenant and tapping into the pituitary. Here in Michelangelo's picture, what is shown is that if you look at the outside of God's robe here, out the outside of God's robe is literally in the shape of a brain. And the arm that's coming out from God is coming out of the pituitary area. You can see it better in this picture. So Michelangelo had hidden some information that, and within the cloak of God is the brain, which I find really fascinating. So that's why I put that picture in the top of the skull. So literally, we are walking around. We don't need to go to a temple because we're carrying a temple within us 24-7. It's right there. It's where our hormones are, our neurochemicals, where our mental and emotional focus are that govern our own temple. Of course, we're affected by what other people are putting in there also. That's why it becomes important to uh, become in charge of your own energy, in charge of your own thoughts and emotions. Going back to the um, part of the brain, you see here the eye of Horus. And literally, eye of Horus is referring to some other parts of the brain. The pons is right in this area here. We have the thalamus. And this curly part goes back into the cerebellum. Again, all the symbolism is referring back to our own temple that we have within ourselves. So we carry this, the Ark of the Covenant within us. And our pituitary is sitting inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And by uh, controlling our, our thoughts, our emotions, our hormones, our endocrines, and our chakras, we become to master ourselves. In, in the Bible, it says that the only person that can open the Torah is God. And to me, Jesus is actually representative of a consciousness. I'm not saying that Jesus, there wasn't a being that was Jesus. But to me, Jesus represented a certain amount of consciousness. And so did Buddha. For example, Buddha is like that consciousness that sits at the base of your skull. And you can look at this as a tree, your brain being a tree. Remember, Buddha sat at the base of the Bodhi tree and became enlightened. It, we have to have that Buddha consciousness, which is awareness. Awareness of where our thoughts and um, our visuals are. And then the second part of that is getting in touch with the Christ consciousness, which resides in the heart. They both go one and one. And actually, you can't reside in the heart in a loving space unless you have the awareness. And you can't reside completely in the mind like you need to be unless you're in the heart, Christ. So Christ and Buddha, in a way, we need to bear, marry in our consciousness. Around our body is a toroidal field. This is a little toroidal field that I put together. Let me move this object here. And basically it's two lids that I glued together and we have funnels in the center. Well, basically this is the energy field around your body. It's the same kind of energy field that is around the earth, around the sun, around um, just about every living object, planets, everything. And we have the chakra system that go down the center. And this field is called the toroidal field, which sounds a lot like Torah, doesn't it? So in order to open up our complete power, to open up this tube, this tor, uh, which is actually called a torsion tube, to open that Torah up, we have to have been in, gotten into our heart, which is the center of this toroidal field, the center of our chakra system. The heart is the center of the chakra system. We have three chakras below, three chakras above, and the heart is in the center. The three chakras below are all masculine. The root chakra is about survival, sexuality, creativity, and power. That's male. And then the feminine in the upper has to do with the voice. Females want to talk more typically than men. We have the intuition. Women typically more intuitive. And then there's the God consciousness. So this energy field, the spherical energy field is around us and we have these torsion tube going down the center. That is the Torah. And we all are in charge of opening up our own Torah, the scroll that has the seven seals, which is the chakra. Taking the outside cups off, you're left with something like this. And this, my friends, is the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is actually, here's the heart, where the heart chakra would be. 
then you have the three lower chakras, and then the three upper chakras. And we marry the masculine part of us to the feminine part of us through the heart, through being in a loving, um, unconditional loving space, being in the Christ consciousness, we open this torsion field up, this holy grail. Once we open it up, we have access to our power. And while we're here on this earth, we're learning different things so that we can be in charge of this powerful, immense power um, in a healthy, balanced way. Our experiences are helping us do that. So this is an energy field. This would be your heart, head, and this is the lower part of your body. That's the Holy Grail. It's the energy that goes down the center of you. And there's a tube that goes through. It's right to the center of your being. And those seven seals that are in Revelations that only Christ can open, only Christ consciousness, and balancing out, opening up the heart. Once you open up the heart, then you have access to this immense power that resides within your own Ark of the Covenant. So the Bible is like this groovy astral story telling you about yourself. All the stories are found within your body. And the Ark of the Covenant right here, which I find really interesting. Oh, I wanted to mention the uh, medical staff in regards to Kundalini. <clears throat> so we have the medical staff right here. Hopefully this picture comes out good enough. Here's the medical staff. So you have the chakras up the medical staff, and then you have this circle orb on top, and then the wings, okay? So the sixth chakra, which is regarding the pituitary, this is the sixth chakra. Then you go into the seventh chakra, which is the pituitary gland that is floating just above and um, behind the um, pituitary, about in this area here. So the, here's the pituitary, here's the pineal gland right about here. That's the seventh chakra. That's where the light comes into the body. The eye is going upward. This pituitary, the eye is going forward from the forehead. This eye is going up into God consciousness. Uh, it's, 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 it's like pure consciousness awareness. And um, the orb that you see on top of the medical staff, the orb is representing a, a, a representative of the pineal gland. And the wings are literally the corpus callosum that span the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So the corpus callosum, the wings on top of the medical staff, represent the pituitary um, seal being open, the pineal being opened, and then the left and right brain being completely in balance through the corpus callosum, uh, callosum that connect left and right brain. And there you have um, the Ark of the Covenant. Right there in the center, it's the keystone of the skull. It holds a lot of things together. Again, it's the huge temple. When you go to the temple to worship, and you, the Ark of the Covenant being there at the, at the front of the temple, there it is right there. You have access to it. You've always had access to it. It's in your own hands.